It's a great big wonderful world and it's filled with stuff, all kinds of stuff. Some stuff is alive and some is not. A long time ago, people classified stuff that way. If it was alive or had been alive, it was called organic. And if it was not, it was labelled inorganic. But in 1828, a scientist named Friedrich Wuhler accidentally made something organic from some inorganic substances, and that messed that theory up. So, if we can't easily divide stuff up the old-fashioned way, how can we tell the difference? Well, it turns out that organic substances all have something in common that most inorganic materials don't, and that is the atom carbon. Almost everything that has carbon in it is organic. And almost everything else is inorganic. There are a few exceptions, like carbon dioxide, so many people say organic compounds have a carbon-hydrogen bond. Turns out, because carbon is so special, it can form four strong bonds, most particularly with hydrogen, so it can make large organic compounds pretty easily. Inorganic compounds can't do that, so they are often much smaller. Here are some examples. There are many more organic compounds than inorganic compounds because of the unique qualities of carbon. Its stable bonding allows it to keep longer molecules together. Inorganic compounds often can't do that. The good news for inorganic compounds, though, is that they are easy to write out in chemical formulas. But chemical formulas can cause problems in organic chemistry. The same number of atoms can make up totally different compounds. Look at the chemical formulas for ethyl alcohol and dimethyl ether. They are both C2H6O, but ethyl alcohol is a liquid and primary alcohol in alcoholic beverages, and dimethyl ether is a colourless gas used as an aerosol propellant in some appliances. So structural formulas have to detail the arrangement. Can you see the difference? Carbon can form chains, branches, rings, and combinations of these. What makes carbon so special? It is just the right size and in just the right place in the periodic table. The way carbon is structured, two electrons completely fill the inner shell or orbit. But the next shell needs eight and there are only four electrons there, so it is ready, willing and able to happily find four electrons to fill it and make it stable. Carbon forms covalent bonds by sharing electrons. The electrons spend time in the outer shell of either carbon or hydrogen here. This organic compound is methane. Here is the structural formula for methane with its single bond. In this model of ethylene or ethene, two electrons of one carbon atom are shared with two electrons from another carbon atom. Here is the structural formula for ethane or ethylene showing the double bond. Two carbon atoms here share six electrons to make acetylene. This is the structural formula for acetylene, which is the simplest triple bond.